Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We are in Muskegon, Michigan. We are hair scramble racing, and we've got 10 seconds. Had a really good jump off the line there, and then just didn't drive it in hard enough to the first turn, so done that a couple times this year. I need to learn to hold that gas about a half a second longer than I feel comfortable with. here today was a mix of single track, uh, grass track, moto, hill climbs, sand sections, enduro cross. This one, this one had it all. So, a lot of, a lot of fun here today. Conditions in the woods were really good as far as the soil moisture. A little, little dry out in the, the grass track in the moto where it was really sandy. Uh, the dust was, dust was flying out there for sure. I would call it racier than others. It had multiple lines. You can see here, you can go left or right. Gave you a lot of opportunities to pass, I felt, um, as compared to some of the other courses that we typically race. So I like to see that. Um, it avoids the bottlenecks. I didn't. I think the only bottleneck I did have was on the hill climb um, and then on the off-camper stuff here in the, in the first lap. It washed out a little bit there with some water coming down the hill and got bottlenecked and I became part of it. Uh, you'll see a little bit later in the video, but um, overall, um, just smooth open, open racing today. Not a lot of uh, holdups at all. at the row behind us, the team class, they, their line looked larger than ours. They may have been 45, 50. I don't know. I didn't look to see how many they had. Um, you know, consistent numbers. Consistently, the numbers are, are up this year, race to race. So, love, love to see that. Hope it continues.
this whole moto section through throughout the race just became more and more moved out as the day went on and towards the end it was just not fun to ride for me anyway like like i mentioned in previous videos i i don't care for big whooped out sand sections but that's we get a lot of that here in michigan so i've become better at it but i still have a long way to go second hair scramble back since breaking my ribs and that the first one that I was back here at Valley I rode two laps and I you know I think I got in 16 miles something like that um, wanted to do the whole race here today I ended up going for two and a half hours I think I got in I got the white flag at like two hours and 30 minutes and uh, didn't feel like doing another eight and a half miles at that point uh, I had a couple uh couple of tip overs just from fatigue on the, the you know my white flag lap and uh, did, didn't want to risk anything out there so stayed healthy pulled off with the white flag uh, got in four laps and uh, like I said two and a half hours of riding so felt pretty good about that I, I think uh, probably could have completed it had I not had some uh, some hang ups and just stupid little things happen on the off camera stuff and did, made the hill climb every time and then my last lap up um, kind of looped out at the top and uh, lost a lot of energy there and it just from that point I was just like ready to ready to be done it wasn't fun at that point anymore but overall this was really great course really really fun layout hats off to everybody at Muskegon Motorcycle Club that, that laid this course out because probably most fun hair scrapple course I've ridden this year. section toward the end of the race got really rutted out it did have some uh, alternative lines kind of developing through here and um, opened it up a little bit through here as the race went on but um, this is where I had one of my little tip overs and hold ups the last lap there were riders down in the two primary lines and I took a different alternative line following some other riders and it did it turned out not to be <laughs> not to be a good line and I got held up there for, I don't know, probably, it seemed like 10 minutes. It was probably more like three to four minutes, but it was uh, 
enough to tire me out. My bike tipped over a couple times and I was overheating and that's that's when uh it just takes a lot out of you picking up the bike a couple different times late in the race and I was spent at that point. that two-stroke behind me. He's like, who is this guy? And uh, there went Jake Ballman. Um, Ride to Team C with my son, Brayden. And some of you probably heard already, but Brayden broke his, fractured his wrist this week at uh, FCA Motocross Camp there at Battle Creek. So went down, was riding really good throughout the week. And then Wednesday went down in a crash late in the day. Ended up fracturing the growth plate in his wrist. So he's out for four to six weeks they're saying um letting that heal he's anxious to be back he's he's telling me he's racing at battle creek regardless so we'll we'll see about that but um he really wants to get back on the bike but um jake rode solo in team c today and ended up they came out on top or jake came out on top i should say i still had to register Braden, and um i guess that's in the rule book i looked it up you can you can ride solo in Team C if your partner is unable to race as long as you register your partner as well. So we did that. Um, you know, they were the points leaders coming in here. And they wanted to continue that that journey. So um, there's Jake in front of me there, and he came away. I think he ended up winning by two and a half minutes, something like that, here today. So a lot of, a lot of good competition out there for him. job mixing up this course this year so some of the directions that we rode this course was the same as the year before some of it was backwards as the year before so um, real nice job kind of mixing it up the big hills that we were going down in the previous couple years we went up this year so that was a different different challenge um, I think we were eight and a half miles somewhere around there so pretty pretty long course so we were able to do um, minute starts Again, that always helps with, with log jams and bottlenecks here on that first lap. So um, 
those the longer courses I seem to enjoy more because um, we just we avoid those hang-ups. thinking going through this section vividly um, man I've got arm pump really bad I just felt like I was gripping gripping too tight hanging on too tight you know the first 15 minutes of the race um, thinking man I'm not gonna be able to ride even an hour today but it's one of those things that as the race goes on I don't know if I just become more comfortable my body adapts adjusts and things start to loosen up and I felt pretty good probably for through the first probably 90 minutes or so uh, before I started to get this feeling again of, you know, arm pump and, and fatigue. But overall, I mean, I felt a lot better than I did at Valley. And I've ridden a couple times since then. Nothing, nothing significant. I did a little bit at the the uh, CMB hair, or Sprint Enduro. But um, got to get my conditioning back for sure. There's a few times when I did go down, I just completely out of breath. So got to get back cycling and back in the gym so plan on doing that here close out the year if I can find time This section of the course um, was the 50 auto in the Stasic course. Uh, Stasic's race uh, Saturday night. My, my daughter races in that. And then I've got another daughter who races in the 50 auto class here Sunday morning. And this was part of their course. And they they threw this in kind of last minute into ours and added about another four tenths of a mile to our course, I think. Coming through scoring here, lap one. This is only about halfway through the lap where the scoring segment was. I think I was 12th, I think. Yeah, 12th first lap. And then, like I said, after after this, I got I got hung up in some stupid stuff in that off camber. Ended up going, having to slide down the hill and jump over a log and just didn't get the line I wanted due to other riders being down and it put me in a bad position. So, lost, uh, lost four positions, I think on that lap I think I was 16th coming through on uh, lap two and um, I think I was 14th or 15th then when I when I ended up pulling off with the white flag and then I dropped one position that final lap went back to 16th so the leaders must have been pretty close behind me coming through on my white flag uh, for me to only drop one position there so came away 16th on the day out of 40 and uh, I don't know, I had no expectations going into it really other than I just wanted to go out here and 
try to do the, the complete hair scramble of the race today, which is two hours plus one lap, which for me, just the way it would have gone, probably would have been about three hours, and, I don't know, 20 minutes, three hours, and 25 minutes, somewhere around there, had I done my final lap. sections that we're coming into now is really where we become get into the, the elevation change and the off camber that this course had to offer here so we're right on the edge of a uh, ravine here that real real steep drop off here to the right um, just kind of switch backs back and forth along here for a little bit um, before we actually drop down in and then go up the other side and then back so this this is probably like I said, my favorite part of the course, just because, you know, it was something a little bit uncomfortable and something a little bit um, different than what we typically ride. So this was the hot line. The bypass actually went down straight there, and you can see these guys looping back in here. So this was the steeper section that that, me, that I took there in the right here in front of me. I would have been paying attention this guy over here to the right is telling everybody to go down and go right he's telling showing them the line and I don't listen that guy did he makes it through I said oh I can shoot across here and I just completely bury my front tire here it doesn't look bad on here but it's a lot bigger drop than it was and there was just no traction there because of the log so I get held up here for I don't know how long 
probably a couple minutes. <laughs> Took the energy out of me right here on the first lap. And it's really off camber, so my rear tire's just sliding down the hill. So finally I decide I'm just gonna go to the bottom and take the line I should have originally that they were directing me to take. frustrating to watch over again. Had that not happened, I felt like I was running fairly well. I mean, I was top 12 here lap one, and then this just really, caught, not only did it cost me positions and time, it cost me energy early in the race, and that was, that was the biggest detriment, I think. hill climb here this is one that we went down in previous years yeah, I'd forgotten about this yeah right off the left side here trying to avoid those stopped riders on the hill rip the shroud <laughs> the shroud off the bike almost tip over here it, it's a lot easier when there's nobody in your way I'll tell you that <laughs> this guy up here almost had a really bad day I don't know how he was able to get that bike back up from where he was but man that's steep pulled off man I'm glad I did man that thing was gonna destroy my spokes that must have happened when I went off and went through the those trees trying to avoid those riders on the hill I think and I got that somehow caught up in my rear rear tire rear axle area
because there's a hill climb off to the left here and I'm I'm looking up there and I can see riders kind of stopped on the hill and couldn't tell for sure but I was trying to determine if it made sense to go up or not if there was a huge bottleneck you might be better off taking the bypass which I, I elected to go for the hill there were some riders there but it, it wasn't it wasn't too bad of a hold up so I don't know if it was a time saver or not just based on I had I did have to stop there for I don't know 15 seconds or so and wait on some riders to kind of move out A lot of these riders are row one and row two riders that are coming through and they're actually lapping me on the first lap they were um, you know at about a 13 minute head start on us to begin with and they're just flying through this course Kind of little staging area here if you didn't shoot all the way up here you could go from here and hit that left side again or you could take this right right line this right line didn't seem to be as steep kind of cut some of the um, camber out of it here a little bit a couple riders hung up here not left me enough room to, to scoot around the outside here though back where we started. This is one lap around Muskegon Hair Scramble for the 2021 course. Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you guys at the next one.